Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting tech video brought to you by the KWU Tech Training Team. My name is CJ Johnson, and I'm a training specialist on our awesome team. Now, this video series is called Dive Into the Details of DocuSign. The objective of this particular training video is to show you how to create an envelope within the DocuSign room all with accomplishing the goal of increasing your DocuSign knowledge. Okay, you can see I have my DocuSign room here for my DocuSign account. And there's two ways that we can actually create an envelope. First way is by clicking on the envelope tab here at the top of the screen. So once we click on that envelopes tab, it will invite us to create a new envelope and we can click on that button there. All right, as we go in this way, we can see that this is setting us up for the first piece of setting up our envelope. We'll have to put in the recipient's name and also drop or download the file that we want to have in the envelope. All right, let's show you the second way of how to create an envelope here in the DocuSign room. Now I can be right in the documents tab here at the top. And from here, I'm gonna select the forms that I want to send in the envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on those forms here. And when I click on those forms, notice that there's a row of icons that appear at the top underneath the history button. Now we're gonna go ahead and look for the slanted pin icon. Once we hover over that, we can see it says create envelope. Let's go ahead and click on create envelope. Once we go in and click on those forms and then click on the slanted pin icon, you can see we have this box appear. Now this is different than uh, that first way we showed you how to create the envelope. Now, this is going to essentially give us pre tag roles or a way to automatically assign the recipients of this envelope and have those action items automatically show up on our forms. So this is going to save us a lot of time and make things more efficient as we're setting up our envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and select the recipients that this envelope is going out to. You're probably wondering where are these recipients coming from? So DocuSign will recognize what type of forms you're sending out and based on what's in your details area, it already will automatically assign or kind of assume who the recipients could be in this envelope really saving you time and setting up things to make things faster for you, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click on the recipients um, that we want to send this out to. Maybe it's our buyer and our seller, just for this example today. I'm gonna click continue. All right, notice that as we went through this second method of setting up our envelope, we not only got recipients or pre-tag roles available to help us out, but we also see the documents here at the top. We don't need to upload them because we already selected them from our room. Now here at the bottom, we have those recipients and typically we should see those names and emails already plugged in here uh, for those recipients that we're gonna send this out to. Now that information is gonna pull from our details area. So if we're not seeing information here, we can go back to that details area here in the DocuSign account and plug in that information. Now this area here, this is add recipients. There's a couple of things and features that I want you to know about. Number one, we can see a number on the left-hand side of those recipients. Right now we have a number one and a number two. What this means is Don is going to receive the envelope first. After Don is done completing those action items, signing, initialing, etc., then the envelope will be sent to Tommy. Now, if you don't want a signing order in that way and you want everybody to get the envelope at the same time, you can put a number one by both of them, or you can just choose to unclick the signing order box here at the top. Let's talk about the needs to sign area. If you click on that, there's several options or action items that we can assign to these recipients. Let's talk about a couple of them. We see needs to view and then receives a copy. If someone needs to view the envelope, they'll actually need to click into the envelope, open it up and see what has happened. Typically, this is a person that's in the last order or last part of the order in a, a, a signing order. So maybe, you know, two or three people have signed it and they need their uncle or lawyer or whoever to go in and see what has happened. But they'll need to actually open up the envelope to do so. Now, with receives a copy, they don't need to open up the envelope. They don't need to go into it after everything's been signed it'll just be sent to them via email as a copy for them to review and see maybe that's for a broker uh, at the end of this process all right let's pay attention to this customize button here in the recipients area so if i click on customize we have two features here and let's talk about both of them 
Number one, it says add an access code. So if I click on that, what we can do here is plug in the access code that will add a layer of protection over these envelopes as we're sending them over to our recipients. Now, in today's world where cybersecurity is getting more and more important, this is allowing us to add that extra layer of security by plugging in an access code here. Now, to add in the other piece here where it says add private message, we could put a private message in here for Donna and say, hey, once you receive this email, send me a text or give me a phone call so I can now give you the access code. All right, let's pay attention to the bottom of the screen here where it says email message. Now, this is going to be front facing, meaning whoever you're sending this envelope out to, they're going to see this email message here. Now. I had an agent in one of my trainings say, hey, CJ, it's never the case that when I'm sending this information out to my people, uh, recipients, they don't know what to do. In fact, they call me, text me eight, 10 times a day because they're confused. So in this email message area, what you can do is really elaborate, give more details, nuances to those forms so that you can eliminate those questions throughout the day. So you can say, hey, when you get to section two, this is what this is talking about. When you get to page eight, this is what this is reviewing or talking about here um, to really give more clarity. There's another really cool feature here at the bottom of the screen where you can customize the email language for the recipient. So I can go in here by clicking the box and select the email language that I want to choose. Now, this won't change the language in that email message. It won't change the language on the DocuSign form, but it will change the language on the steps and guides that they need to go through. So where it says start here, initial here, sign here, that will be in a language that you can choose from in these options here. After we clicked on that yellow next button, we can now see our forms. And really, this is the last step of our envelope process before we send it out. I like to say this is the last step on the runway before we send off this envelope to the recipients. Now, what we can do is go through here, scroll down and see those signature fields, date fields and initial fields already plugged in. Um, this is the power of that second way of creating the envelope with those pre tag roles, saving you a lot of time. So going through here and making sure everything looks good is a best practice. Now, as you can see, there's other fields that we can utilize here on the left hand side. Um, these fields that have a color associated with it are associated with the recipient. So we can see Donna is here in yellow. Uh, Tommy's in blue. If I had other recipients, uh, they would be in purple or green, etc. So I can pull in a signature field if I need to and place it where I want it on the form here and we can also change the size of that signature field as well now size does matter here because uh, whatever size we leave this as as soon as they sign it their signature will also be that same size so try to have that signature field initial field be a really good size based on the form that it's associated with now i can bring in initial field as well change those sizes and anytime you bring in your own a signature field or initial field put a date field next to it as a best practice and it says date here but you will get a time and date stamp uh, involved with this field here now if i need to get rid of these fields i can right click and delete those fields i can also use the delete button on my keyboard and there should be uh, a delete button here on the bottom right hand side of the screen as well all right before i send this off one last thing that i can utilize to make sure my envelope looking really good here is just clicking on the preview button in the upper right hand corner so in this area we can see three different views of this envelope that we're sending out to the recipients based on the device that they're using uh, this first view here is a desktop view so they can see what it'll look like there if they're opening up on a laptop or desktop this middle view here is if they're opening up on a tablet they can see that view there and then the last view is a mobile view. So if they're looking at this on their phone, as we know, everyone's doing everything on their phones, they can see that view or preview for the recipient. But once I've went through and looked at these forms here, I can just go ahead and click on this send button in the bottom right hand corner. Now, if I need to go back and adjust uh, an email or change a name, I can click on the arrow in the upper left hand corner here, no problem. Uh, but from here, we're going to go ahead and send off this envelope with the yellow send button. Once we've sent out that envelope, we can see right here an updated status of that envelope. 
So here we can see a blue bar over this and it says needs my signature. Now the blue bar means this envelope is not complete. People still need to sign this. They have action items that have not been completed. And it says needs my signature only because I have my email attached to the envelope here. Now, typically you're going to see the words waiting for others, uh, waiting for those other recipients to sign. Now, from here, we can click right into this envelope to see an up close and personal view of this status here. So we can see the two recipients and their action items. They both still need to sign is the status on the right hand side. Now, you're going to see an updated status once these recipients have signed the envelope in real time. So over on the right hand side, we'll see that once the recipient has signed this, we can see that the status is updated in real time here. So we can see a date timestamp here, the hour, minute down to the second, showing us an updated recipient here. All right. Once we have a envelope that's been completed and signed, you'll see we'll have a green bar over that envelope. A, a little check there on the left hand side and the date that it was completed. If we click into that envelope, we'll see the check there and the signed date uh, status there as well. Another thing to be aware of, once we have a completed envelope here, here at the top in the documents area, we're going to see the sign form here sitting in our room as well. Now, with this sign form here with this green check, what we can do with that is obviously bring it over into command and update it into the checklist for compliance. Thank you for watching this video. We trust that you're now ready to conquer your business and take it to the next level. If you have any questions, just email our team at learncommand at kw.com. And if you would like to attend a live hands-on virtual training, scan the QR code on the screen and sign up today.